Okay. Okay, so this quote is kind of perfect for right now. When life hands you dirt, plant seeds. So soil blocking, it, uh, like I said, it's a really um, ingenious method. You can produce really vigorous seedlings uh, with roots that establish faster than container started seedlings. Um, and it's a method that the Dutch and the English have both been using for decades now. And Elliot Coleman, he is the author of the New Organic grower for season harvest. He was first introduced to soil blocking when he was visiting um, a European farm in about 1976. So prior to that, he was basically making his own makeshift soil blocks. He would build these forms out of two by fours and he would fill them with soil and he would kind of plant, uh, he would kind of cut the soil like brownies and plant within those grids. And then when the plants got to a certain point, he would remove um, the two by fours. And so when he went over to Europe, he saw that they actually had a tool to make these soil blocks, but they were quite big. And so he wanted to make them smaller so that they would be closer to the heat mat and they would germinate a lot faster. So he ended up working with a British manufacturer and he developed what's known as the mini block. Those are the little blocks on the screen. They're three quarters of an inch and that's basically the system that we use today. So really, let me see, All right, perfect. Okay, so what, what, are, what are soil blocks? They are small blocks of compressed soil that are made with a tool called a soil blocker. And the, so the seedlings grow in a free standing little block of growing medium rather than in a cell container. And this method allows you to start triple the amount of plants that you would be able to sell, well, probably double the amount of plants that you'd be able to start in a 72 cell container. So the soil blockers have different sizes available. Um, they're they're kind of similar to cell flats like trays like you can size them up so the smallest one is the three quarter inch soil blocker and that one makes 20 individual little soil blocks and it has a little dibbler um, indent so when you make the blocks it has a little you know depression of where to put the seed and it allows the seeds to sit really close to the heat mat you definitely need a heat mat if you're going to start seeds indoors it just makes you know, it's so much easier. And so germination time will actually be a lot faster when you soil block. Um, you can basically take a third of the start time off if you're soil blocking. So for example, if the envelope says to start six weeks ahead of your frost date, your last frost date, you can go ahead and start four weeks um, from your last frost date. But um, the key to soil blocking is timing because you want to have plants that aren't stressed and the blocks are very small. So most plants, you can go right from the, the quarter inch block size into the garden, but your garden has to be ready and the weather has to be ready. And so, um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. They'll live a long time, but the root system will kind of get a little bit matted underneath. Um, so the next size up is the two inch blocker. So that one makes four large soil blocks. So basically you're gonna, that's for when you have seeds that won't fit in the tiny three quarter inch soil blocks, like bigger seeds, like sweet peas, um, sunflowers, uh, you would put those in the two inch block or you would use the two inch block to pot up the little three quarter inch blocks into the two inch. And I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Johnny's Select Seeds is one of the vendors that sells soil blockers. And they also have a one and a half inch blocker that makes five blocks. Not really sure. I think it's just a sizing preference. Um, I purchased my blockers through the Gardener's Workshop. Uh, Lisa Ziegler owns the company down in Virginia, and so she packaged um, the three-quarter inch blocker and the two-inch blocker together um, in a set. So that's, that's what I ended up getting. Um, 
there is also a four inch block, which is pretty intense. And I think that you would only use the four inch block if you're on a commercial level. Um, so these are the little uh, tools that you would utilize in the two inch blocker, the square, um, can you see my pointer? The square little pegs here are what you would use to pot up. So say you had tomatoes started in the three quarter inch size and they're, they're, they're getting ready. They have a true set of leaves. You want to get them. You want to have a smooth, continuous growing process for them. So you want to pot them up into a two inch block. You would take out the dibblers of your soil block and put in these little pegs and it makes a perfect little indent. So you can just pop that little block right in there and then the roots connect with the soil of the two inch and just take off from there. Sometimes, um, well, last year I was lazy and I just didn't feel like making the mix for my soil blocker, my two inch blocker. So I just took this little peg and just filled a container um, with soil with potting mix for my tomatoes and just used that peg to kind of make the indent um, so I could pot my tomatoes just into a container because I knew they weren't going to be in the container that long. So that made it a little easier. So the the entire benefit of soil blocking is that the roots are air pruned. So there's a little bit of line in between these blocks. Um, it's not a lot. So they do, the roots do tend to kind of grow together within the block itself. But once the roots hit the edge of the, the block, they air prune off. They don't continue on. And the only problem is that growing them indoors without a greenhouse, you have to bottom water on a solid tray, um, unless you don't mind, you know, a mess on your floor. So the bottom, the roots will kind of grow together and make more of a mat. Um, so, you know, the longer you wait, the more matted they're going to get underneath. But I think in the greenhouse setting, they grow them on the, um, like the flats that you, you know, put your, put your, cell packs in and so the water goes through and there's more air exposure to the bottom. It's just hard when you're inside, you kind of have to bottom water. But research has found that roots of seedlings started in containers, they train themselves to circle around that container. So they take it, it they take up to three times longer once you transplant them for them to stop like they have to relearn like, whoa, I don't have to circle anymore. I'm free to just grow. So soil blocks can, when they are transplanted, they hit the soil and they will transplant up to three days sooner than container started um, seedlings. Um, do, do you want to stop and have, do we have any questions so far about um, the blockers? What I can do really quick is I, I'm going to stop share. I have the three um, quarter inch blocker here. So this is what it looks like. Um, like I said, I got it from Gardner Supply Workshop and it was a little pricey. I think I got the package with the three quarter inch blocker, the two inch blocker, and the accessories. So Johnny's select seeds, they will charge you to buy the little pegs separately. Um, so I got the pegs, the dibblers, and the two sets of blockers. I think it was like 65 bucks. So now it's a little late in the game. You probably could try to DIY a, a blocking system. Katie and I were talking about it the other day, like could you pack, you know, egg cartons and kind of try to plop them out or if you had some sort of other square-ish container, you know, could you pack the medium in and flip it and then just cut it like um, Elliot Coleman did when he first started? You know, you could, you could experiment if you didn't want to necessarily make that investment um, in the blocker right away. Do you guys have any questions? questions? I do. <laughs> So Brandy, do you always seed into the three quarter inch and then always transplant into the larger size or will you ever seed directly into the two inch? 
You would seed directly into the two inch if it was a bigger seed. Um, like okay. if, like I, right. okay. I tend to grow um, everything that I tend to grow. I can put directly into the three quarter inch. Um, okay. Even marigolds. It's really funny. The marigold seeds. You take them and you um, you find kind of what end is the the tail, and you just stick it straight down <laughs> into the block. So um, yeah, I, I've been lucky so far. I, I typically plant everything. I have not planted, I have not started anything in the two inch blocker, but I, I do want to pot up my tomatoes this year using the two inch blocker. <laughs> and then will you ever transplant directly into the garden from the three quarter inch? Or do you want yes. size in between? Yes, nope. Last year, everything that I grew except for the um, tomatoes was transplanted from the three quarter inch directly into the garden. Okay. Yeah, I had to, um, I don't have any blocks that I can pick up and show that are ready yet, but I had to kind of like cut them apart. And if the bottom was super matted, I kind of just like, use an exacto knife to slice off that bottom of roots. It's similar to roots like, you know, when you pull them out of the cell pack, they're just not as they're not wound around, but if but if they're on the they're if they're in the tray too long, they will kind of thicken on the bottom. Okay. Okay, so, let me go back Anyone to Anyone else share. have any questions? Let me check the chat. Okay, I think we're good. good. Let's see. Okay. So why I love soil blocking is because it's a space saver. So this is a picture of a five by seven. It's a styrofoam meat tray that you, you know, that the meat comes on. And there are 40 plants on that tray. Um, this is the bottom photo is a more of like a cafeteria tray and it has 240 soil blocks on it. So that just, I, did, I forgot to bring up my 72 inch cell, uh, cell starter. So I, but I do have my tray. So this is my tray that I typically grow on and it's from um, uh, Kingsman Company. It's a windowsill tray but it holds five of the three quarter inch soil blockers. So that is a hundred little baby plants. I'll, I'll rock in here. And why I like that is because I, I like to grow different stuff. So I have like status on the end. I have bunny tail grass here, but ultimately the marigolds, I'm gonna have to swap out and move some of them because they're some of them are really short and some of them are really tall so i need to adjust them height wise but then i just use my spatula and they're delicate but you can kind of shovel them onto different trays so i like i like these size trays i think if you were growing um you know on a on a bigger scale you could definitely use the cafeteria trays like if, if you knew i you know i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna start 400 snapdragons you know, you would use the cafeteria tray because you'd have all the same variety on that tray. I really like to mix it up and customize. Um, but two of these trays will fit onto my heat mat. So I can put 200 plants on my heat mat to germinate versus the 72. So it really is a huge space saver. Okay, so blocking mix. This is where it gets tricky. Blocking mix is the key to being success successful with the soil blocks because it needs to hold, it needs to bind together to be like a solid, to hold its shape, you know, freestanding shape. So you don't want it to be loose and fluffy, you know, you want it to be more, more dense. And there are some recipes available to make your blocking mix. However, 
there are other that you can just use potting mix. So on the screen, I do have the blocking mix recipe, which it is available in the PDF um, that I sent to Katie and, and Genesee MGs. We can get you that too if you need it. But it is also on the gardening workshop um, website. And so it's 16 cups of peat moss, four cups of sifted compost, green sand, and um, rock phosphate powder. So the only downside to this is the green sand and the rock phosphate powder. Typically, you, you can only get those in really large quantities. Um, I, don't, I don't think that they're necessarily available for sale in smaller quantities and a quarter cup is really a tiny amount. Um, so the gardener's workshop where I bought the blockers from, she does sell a little container of those nutrients mixed together and then it makes like a certain amount of cups. You know, you can add it to your, to your compost and to your peat moss. Um, Johnny Select Seeds, they sell potting mix that they recommend for soil blocking. Um, I haven't tried it just because shipping is probably a lot. I did buy some blocking mix. I don't think she sells it anymore. Fruition Seeds um, was selling blocking mix. And it kind of, I don't know, to me, I was kind of like, eh, I had to sift it. Like it had some, you know, rocks and sticks and stuff in it. And the biggest part to seed starting is you really want sterilized mix. Like that is going to help you in the long run. You're going to avoid a lot of your dampening off um, fungal issues if you start with a mix that's sterilized. So I've, I've gone to Country Max and I've looked at, you know, different bags of um, seed starter, which is different than, it's not the same as just potting soil. It has a different amount of like, you know, peat moss um, and other ingredients in it to keep it um, lighter, um, to retain the moisture differently than potting mix. So I just tried to look for one that had a compost in it, thinking that that would make it, um, you know, more dense. And I did test it today. And so this, this particular brand um, had, I'll stop share for a minute, had a lot of um, perlite in it, like bigger chunks. So I did use a sifter to kind of get out some of the bigger pieces, but I have another brand of potting mix. Um, or seed starting mix rather downstairs. I think it's black gold and the, the perlite is much, much finer. Um, so I think you, you just have to experiment. It can be done. You can soil block with seed starting pre-purchased mix, which I think is probably better because it's sterilized. Um, but you just, the blocks are a little bit more fragile and you have to be careful when you're mixing. So your mix, you want to, you want to start with your dry ingredients and it's kind of like mixing concrete. You want to just slowly add in the water and it's this very fine line of is it, is it going to drip when I squeeze it or is it just going to barely drip when, when I squeeze it, you know? So you kind of want to see a little bit when you're pushing the blocker in there to fill it, you kind of want to see a little bit of water coming up out of the mix, but you don't want it like sopping wet. Like if you were to grab a handful and squeeze it, you don't want a ton of water running out of it. And I think that based on like what I've, what I've read about people learning how to soil block, getting the consistency of the mix the wetness of the mix right is, is half the battle. Um, and it just takes practice. It just takes, you know, just being able to like look at it and feel it and see like, okay, is this gonna stick together? Is it gonna be too wet? Um, and that's, that's just practice. But I was able to do it with store-bought mix. So um, there's another recipe online um, a couple recipes. Johnny's Select Seeds has one for, from Elliot Coleman. So he has like a different little ratio. And then he does have like an old YouTube video, Elliot Coleman, online. And it basically, his oldest uh, recipe was just peat moss, compost, and I think it was blood meal. Um, and it was just those three. Oh, and vermiculite, fine vermiculite together. So 
I think you can use, you know, potting mix. Um, do we have any questions on the mix? Because that's usually, that's usually the hard, you know, the hardest part is the mix. What do you use to sift your, like? So I, I went to Country Max to see if that, if I could find like a soil sift, like when you're a little kid, you have a sifter for the beach. I mean, <laughs> and of course, when you, when you're an adult and you want one, you can't find one. So the same company that I got the tray from, um, it's uh, Kingsman company. It, they're, they're a British company. I get this cute little catalog. Um, you know, several times a year and they have really, you know, nifty other garden tools, but they have a sifter. Um, it's a two in one sieve. So it has a, a larger screen and a smaller screen and it's 1750. So I just was like, you know what, I'm going to use that and I've, and I've used it. So I, I did buy that. Um, and then the trays were like, the trays that I bought, they're $4.95. So like, if you really want to get into soil blocking, it's not that big of an investment to kind of, you know, spend the 20 bucks on the, the sifter. <laughs> oh, yeah. It won't let me unmute. Hold on, Nancy, we're trying to- There. Am I am I okay now? Yes. Have you have you tried using vermicompost? Um, I I haven't. So I do have a worm bin myself, um, but usually it's my uh, worm bin is really the um, the castings are like super super thick, like they're mm -hmm. they're very saturated. Mm -hmm. So I typically just do that um, when I'm planting out into the garden. I mm -hmm. I add that in when I'm transplanting. Okay. Okay. But you could probably add it. Like if you were to make your own mix, you could mm -hmm. use the vermicompost as as the compost ratio. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the quality. Like I've seen worm bins that have like really super nice, like granular, fluffy compost. Oh, no. Mine is mine is like mine's like mud. Heavy. Yeah, mine's, mine's mud. like mud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll meet I'll meet. Any more questions on the mix portion? And like I said, it's just practice. You know, you'll, you, it looks so easy. I have a video that we'll watch at the end and she, she plops out the blocks and she makes it look so easy. And the first time I did it, they just fell apart. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but today I made, I made all five and boop, boop, boop. They were, you know, you just got to get the consistency of the mix down and then you'll be good. And so Brandy, do you have to keep it pretty consistently moist? Like if it dries out, will it start to crumble? Like... Yeah, like, um, like I made a batch. So um, I have a tub, like, you know, just a, a decent, I didn't want to bring it in because it's, it's filled with dirt, but or soil. Um, so it's a, you want it to be, you don't want it to be too small because you like have to use both hands and like, you know, really rock that thing. So it is, it's a bigger, I don't know the quantity size. So I, you know, put in a, a whole bunch of the mix and then I added my water, but then that night I only wanted to make, you know, I only made 10 blocks. So I had a ton of mix left. So you can just let it dry out. Like you can just leave it in the open container. But then I went back, you know, later in the week and I wanted to make more. So you kind of just gotta, you kind of gotta just feel it and see like, okay, does it need a little bit more water? Um, but yeah, I usually just let it dry out and then reuse it when I'm ready. And how about once your blocks are formed, like if those dry out, will they start to like lose their shape at all? Or? So they, so it's, it's weird. Like when they, um, when they dry out, um, they, they, they aren't, they're delicate, but they're not super, they're a little bit easier to move when they're like not super wet, but not super dry. Um, once the roots 
get developed and they have a nice root system, you can make you, they're a lot easier to like move around and manage. Um, but they do dry out really fast. So I have to really babysit them. I check them twice a day. I check them in the morning and then I check them in, at night. Um, so that they don't dry out. Um, you don't you don't want the the blocks to dry out completely it's it's seed starting is that's the main that's the main part of seed starting is you don't want your seedlings to dry out but you don't want them to be waterlogged it's this very it's like goldilocks you want to just dry. so um yeah so it's a lot of maintaining the moisture of the blocks but um if you if you have them in a container if you have them on a tray where you can you kind of learn the amount of water that you need to pour in there every time and then they'll soak it all up um if you have too much then you gotta kind of carefully drain it off without spilling all the plants which i've done <laughs> so so the blocks are pretty they're i would say they're the easiest to handle until they have their root system when they're they're moderate moderately like right before you rewater them like if they get really 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 dry they're okay to handle but you're you're gonna kill your seedling because it's gonna be like super dry okay i'm gonna go back to the slideshow okay so how do you make the soil blocks. So I kind of talked about um, wetting the mix and it's the approximate is three parts of mix to one part of water. Um, you can go ahead and use, you know, warmer water. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to use super cold water if you don't want to um, because you're going to probably be putting them on a heat mat anyway. So you might as well use kind of warmer, warmer water. And then you take the mixer and you just take it and you, you, push it down and you shove it back and forth and you rock it and you, you know pull all the mix in. I take my hand a lot of times and I push it and make sure you want the soil really tight in those blocks and then you just take it and put it on your tray and pop it out. Um, but you don't you want to minimize your air pockets and you know if sometimes like the ends the corners won't fill in all the way and so you'll have like a little deformed one um let me see what's on the next screen so the other key part is that you want to rinse your blocker after each set the the mix needs clean contact with the blocker. It, it, it's not dire, like I've done it before, I forgot to rinse this off and, and I do it again, but you'll get a better set of blocks if, it, if the blocker is clean. And then it's just practice, like, the, like it's just like anything else, there's just, it's a technique that you have to develop um, and kind of find your own rhythm and find your own groove of, of what is working, what is not working. But the most common problem with soil blocking is that the mix is either too dry, so it'll fall apart, it'll be all crumbly, or it'll be too wet and it'll just kind of be blob. Like, so that, that is the most common problem is, you know, the mix is either too dry or too wet. So once you have um, your blocks, it's, it's pretty easy to seed. And I actually, um, it's kind of relaxing. So I set up my little area. I pour my seeds into a, like a little tray. A static uh, free container is, is really helpful if you're planting really tiny seeds. I like to do a lot of Snapdragons. So I use the toothpick. I just wet it and then you just, pick up little tiny, the little seeds, like jump right onto the toothpick and you just kind of memorize like, okay, am I gonna go from, you know, left to right? Am I gonna go down and then up and then down and up? Because once those tiny seeds kind of get onto that block, they disappear and <laughs> you can't see them anymore. So um, you just wanna pay attention to kind of where you're placing your seeds. Um, the seeds, that need to be kind of buried a little bit. I usually just use, um, if you don't have like a dibbler, you could use like a pencil and just kind of like, you know, push, push the soil out of the way a little bit. And then you just tuck your seed in and like tuck the, gently tuck the soil on top. 
Um, it's hard to give the blocks a good press. Um, Fruition Seeds was offering her seed starting class for free um, due to the, the, the pause. So I was re-watching some of, some of her classes and she did mention that, you know, seed to graft is really, really important for germination, but it is hard with the blocks to kind of give them a good um, tapping down. So you kind of just want to be mindful of that when you're placing the seeds to try to get them um, on the soil. Uh, I use a lot of vermiculite on top, like the very fine vermiculite, um, especially for seeds that need light for germination. It just helps put a layer over the top of the seeds, but it allows light to go through. So it helps kind of keep those seeds in place and it also helps with moisture um, issues. It helps regulate the moistures on the block. And then you're going to want to keep, it's just like regular seed starting, you want to keep your seeds on a heat mat until 50% of the seeds have germinated and then you can remove them from the heat mat and put them right underneath your lights. I just use regular uh, fluorescent shop lights. Um, there's, there's a spectrum, I believe it's like 63, 6300K is like the daylight spectrum of light that you want. So that allows the plants to kind of do, you know, to get their, their best um, photosynthesis from, from artificial lights. Um, LED, I think work, I just haven't transitioned over. Um, so that's the key to seed starting is having your seeds on a heat mat and then putting them directly um, with the lights. You want them just like an inch, a couple inches on top. Um, of the plants. And bottom watering is really, it's really easy with this because you just fill it. Um, so like I go down, I pull off each tray, I fill it, not completely, I kind of go back and forth, you know, I have a little watering can in between the, the blocks and then I just let it sit for like five, ten minutes, like I'll start another one and then I just kind of see, like you can, you can actually see the water, you know, being taken up and the blocks will have that really moist like look um, and then if there is any extra, I just kind of tip it off. You don't want, you don't want the soil blocks standing in water. So I do check them twice a day. Seedlings are, unfortunately, they're very needy. And then same thing as if you were starting your seeds in cells, you do want to harden them off when they're three to four inches tall uh, before you put them in the garden. Hardening off is probably the worst part of seed starting. It's the most tedious, especially where we live because the, there's, the nights will just be cold and so you have to drag everything in and drag everything out, but um, it really makes a big difference. Lisa uh, Ziegler from the Gardener's Workshop, she does do a technique where she um, doesn't necessarily harden off everything. She'll plant them out into the garden and then she'll cover with row cover, um, that fabric uh, row cover. Um, she won't even use hoops. She'll just put them directly on top, just put it directly on top of the plants and then pin it down with like rocks or um, bricks or whatever you have to pin it down. And she'll leave the row cover on for seven to 10 days and they'll kind of naturally harden off while they're transplanting. So I might try that with some of, some of mine this year and see how it works. Cause I really, hardening off just annoys me. And most importantly, don't get down on yourself if you make a mistake. Everyone kills plants, everyone kills seedlings. I thought, you know, that last year I could get away with just watering them like once a day and I went down and they were all fried and like melted. And, you know, you just have to practice. You just have to read, learn, ask questions of your fellow MGs. And um, it is really, really enjoyable come August when you're out in your garden and you look around and everything out there was started from just a tiny little seed. So um, I think that's what keeps me going. <laughs> so these are the resources that I have. Um, like I said, Lisa Mason Ziegler, she's a cut flower farmer and educator. Um, she has a really uh, 
a lot of really nice resources on her website and she does have some very reasonable priced um, online classes for seed starting and soil blocking. Johnny selected seeds. Any seed that I'm gonna, any, any flower and vegetable seed that I'm gonna start, I go to their website and I look at their recommendation of how many weeks it is, you know, how many weeks ahead of your frost date do you start it? Does it need to be transplanted? Does it want to be direct sown? You know, they have all like, it's like the encyclopedia of plants if they sell it. If they don't sell it, then you kind of got to seek the information elsewhere, but they sell a lot of plants, the seeds to plants. So um, before we end, I just want to um, show you a quick video. So let me share my screen. Okay, so this is Lisa Mason Ziegler from the Gardener's Workshop. This is her soil blocking demo video. She does it really um, short and concise and she makes it look super easy. And um, that's basically, you know, what got me hooked. So we'll check this out. Good morning, we're here at the Gardener's Workshop and we're in full seed starting season. So I'm gonna show you just quickly kind of what our process is here. We soil block. You can see the blocking mix is very wet. This is the blocker. I push it down into the soil a couple of times to make sure the chambers are nice and full. Potato masher is the best tool for striking off the bottom to make it nice and flat. Because I'm doing a variety of seeds that I don't need many plants, I'm using a small tray as you would at home for a home gardener. We dump our seeds into this little seed pan to work from because it has no static cling. We then moisten a toothpick with a little saliva, touch it to the seed, it hops right on. This happens to be lettuce. It's a pretty teeny little seed. We just firmly place the seed on the top of each block. And so I'd put another set of blocks on this tray and fill it up, completely finish sowing the seeds. And then I would take this tray over and put it onto a seedling heat mat. This is obviously a large commercial mat, but we do have a small home gardener size. Once 50% of these seeds show site, um, evidence of sprouting, we take them from the heat and then we move over and put them under a grow light. You can see how low this grow light is. These are some um, coxcomb flower babies that were actually sown yesterday, 24 hours ago, put on heat, and you can see that they're just being born here. So we will water these trays from pouring water in the side each morning when they become dry, and um, they'll stay under the light until we move them outside to a protected carport um, to get hardened off, which means used to the outside environment for about five days and they'll be planted in the garden. So these will go to the garden when they're about three to four inches tall, which for us takes about three to four weeks. So enjoy, start some seeds, it's that time of year.